everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. In this video, we are going to study a new concept called as fuzzy rule based system. Now, they are rule based systems where fuzzy sets and fuzzy logic are used as tools for representing different forms of knowledge or logic about the problem at hand. It is also used for modeling the interactions and relationships existing between its variables. So, let's take a closer look at this topic. From the previous lectures, we have studied the implication if premise then conclusion, where the premise is also known as the hypothesis or the antecedent and the conclusion is also known as the consequent. And this type of an expression is commonly referred to as the if then rule based form. What it means is that if we know a particular fact that is a premise or a hypothesis or an antecedent, then we can infer or derive an other fact that is our conclusion or the consequent. Next we have the canonical form of rule based system. Now we have the canonical forms of the rule based system as rule 1 where if condition is C1 then the restriction is R1 where the condition C1 once again is your antecedent which I am writing A for short and the restriction R1 becomes your consequent as in this is the if then rule based form. And then we have rule 2 where if the condition is C2 then the restriction is R2 and like that we have many number of rules and the rth rule is going to be given by if condition is CR then restriction is RR. So all these are called as a canonical forms of rule based system and all of them are in the form of if then rule based form. Coming to what a restriction is, restrictions are generally modeled by fuzzy sets and relations and these restriction statements they are generally connected by some linguistic connectives like and, or and else and the restrictions that is R1, R2 up till RR they apply to the output actions or consequence of a particular rule. That is the restrictions are also the consequence in the rule based form. Now we may have a number of conditions for a particular rule and they are generally connected by either disjunction or conjunction. Hence we can have multiple conjunctive antecedents or multiple disjunctive antecedents for a particular rule. So let's take a look at each of that. In multiple conjunctive antecedents, we have if x is a1 and a2 and a3 up to al for some l, then y is bs. Here x1 is the input and y is the output and a1, a2, a3 up to al and bs, they are all fuzzy sets or fuzzy numbers. And one important thing here to note is that this entire thing is your antecedent as in all of these comprise of your antecedent and they are joined by the conjunctive operator or the AND operator. Now we know that the conjunctive operator, AND operator and the intersection operator are all the same. They perform the same function. Therefore, this entire thing comprise of your antecedent. That is why it is called as a multiple conjunctive antecedent. Now let us assume a new fuzzy subset which is AS where AS is equal to A1 intersection A2 intersection A3 up till AL. Let me name this as equation 1. And the membership function of the fuzzy subset AS can be expressed as mu AS of x is equal to minimum mu A1 of x, mu A2 of x up till mu AL of x. We have learned in the previous lectures that when we are dealing with the intersection operation, we take the minimum of all the values to find out the membership function. For those of you who still have a doubt in how to do this, please refer lecture 1 of our fuzzy logic playlist. I have provided the link in the description below. So when we substitute equation 1 in this expression, then the compound rule can be rewritten as if x is as, then y is bs, where x and y are the input and output respectively and AS and BS are fuzzy sets of fuzzy numbers. So this is the case for multiple conjunctive antecedents. 
Similarly, we can do it for multiple disjunctive antecedents. In the case of multiple disjunctive antecedents, we can see that is exactly similar to multiple conjunctive antecedents. The only difference is instead of the AND operator, we are using the OR operator here. It is because we know that the disjunctive operator OR and union, they all perform the same function. And that is why we are using OR over here. And here we have X which is our input. If X is A1 or A2 or A3 up to AL, then Y which is our output is BS. And here again A1, A2, A3, AL and BS, they all are fuzzy sets or fuzzy numbers. And this entire thing, it constitutes the antecedent. So once again, we are assuming a new fuzzy subset which is AS, where AS is equal to A1 union A2 union A3 up to AL. And AS's membership function can be represented in the form of maximum of mu A1 of X, mu A2 of X up to mu AL of X. And since we are using the union operator, we know that we have to take the maximum of all the values to get the membership function of AS. And when we combine this equation along with this expression, then we'll get the compound rule which can be rewritten as if X is AS, then Y is BS. So this is the case for multiple disjunctive antecedents. I hope both of it is clear to all of you. So we have seen for multiple disjunctive and conjunctive antecedents. And coming back to the rule-based form or the rule-based system, we can say that most of the rule-based systems, they have more than one rule as we can see here. And the process of obtaining the overall consequent or the conclusion from individual consequence contributed by each rule is called as the aggregation of rules. That is, if you combine the restrictions or the conclusion or consequence from each of the rules, then the combination of all of them is called as aggregation of rules. So let's take a look at that. In aggregation of fuzzy rules, like I've said earlier, what we're doing is we're going to combine the consequence of multiple rules together and form an aggregation of fuzzy rules and get an aggregated output. And therefore, to get this, there are two different ways. We are having the conjunctive system of rules and the disjunctive system of rules. Let's take a look at it one by one, starting with conjunctive system of rules. In the case of a system of rules that must be jointly satisfied, the rules are connected by the AND connectives. And in this case, the aggregated output which is Y, that is our consequent or our conclusion, is found by the fuzzy intersection of all the individual rule consequence yi, where i is equal to 1, 2, 3, up till r. So what it means that is if we have a rule system, then all the rules that are present in the system has to be jointly satisfied and they're all given an equal importance. And the final output, which is y, that is your aggregated output, will be dependent on all the rules and it has to satisfy all the rules. This is called as the conjunctive system of rules. That is, if we have y is equal to y1 and y2 and up till yr, here we can see that it is connected by the AND connectives. Or another way we can represent it in the form of the intersection operator, where we have y is equal to y1, intersection y2, intersection up till yr. Here y refers to our aggregated output then we can say that the membership function of the aggregated output y can be represented as mu y of y is equal to minimum of mu y1 of y, mu y2 of y up till mu y r of y. And since we are using the AND operator or the intersection operator to find out the membership function, we have to take the minimum of all the values. So this is how you do the conjunctive system of rules. In the case of the disjunctive system of rules, it is very similar to conjunctive system of rules. The only difference here is that we are going to take the OR operator. Or in other words, we can say that in this rule system, we should satisfy at least one rule. That is, if any one of the rules among many rules that are present in the rule system, if any one of them is satisfied, then this is called as a disjunctive system of rules. Then the rules are going to be connected here by the OR connectives. And the aggregated output, which is Y, is found by the fuzzy union of all the individual rule consequence yi, where i is equal to 1, 2, 3, up till r. 
which means that we are combining the consequence of all the individual rules present in the rule system by the OR connective in such a way that the aggregated output Y is dependent upon the satisfaction of at least one rule. So this is what the disjunctive system of rules is. And for representing, we have Y is equal to Y1 or Y2 or up till YR where Y stands for the aggregated output. We can also represent it with the form of the union operator because as we know, OR, union and disjunctive operator, they all perform the same function. And if we're representing the aggregate output Y in terms of its membership function, we have mu Y of Y is equal to maximum of mu Y1 of Y, mu Y2 of Y up till mu Y R of Y. And since we're using the union operator, we have to take the maximum of all the values to get the membership function of the aggregated output. Now this is the disjunctive system of rules. Now this concept will be much more clear when we look at the graphical methods of inference where we have Mamdani, Sugino and Sukumoto. So I hope all these concepts till now were clear to all of you. If anyone has any doubts in any of the concepts, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Either we or another viewer will surely help you out. If you found this video to be useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next lecture, we'll be looking at the different graphical techniques of inferences. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.